was the kind of hit I was expecting. There we go. Hello and welcome to Scottish Man to Man channel. I have been fascinated by pike for years. They're exceptional creatures. They're, um, they're often overlooked. A lot of people treat them as trash, as rubbish. Uh, they don't matter, they're invasive species, they need rid of, they eat all the trout. I disagree. I think they're fantastic to target when you're fishing. Last Friday I found myself a few unexpected hours of free time. Already being up in the hills, I decided to seize the chance and get some pike fishing done. I guess the lures would be hard work at this time of year. With the climate change into a colder one, the fish tend to slow down, so I opted for dead bait instead. Armed with my wire traces and a bag of frozen sardines, I headed for a lock. A lock I've fished before, I know there's good fish in there, and I was excited to go see how they were getting on. My tactics for the day were quite simple. Not by choice, more because I hadn't anticipated doing any pike fishing on this trip. I scrambled together some sea fishing gear, I had 15 to 45 gram spinning rods, two fixed spool spinning reels, all of which would have done the job just fine. I managed to beg, borrow and steal what I didn't have, some pike traces and some alarms to make the day a bit easier. My game plan was simple. I'd set up two dead bait rods at the head of the loch in a nice little bay with some weed just 10 metres off the bank. I'd be fishing just beyond the weed, no more than 20 metres out, so no need to cast for miles. It was a slow start. Uh, not much happened in the first hour or so, and uh, I spent most of my time just staring at the rods doing nothing. But when fishing with dead bait, that can be expected. Sometimes it takes a while for the scent of the bait to get around the water and bring the fish in. After the first hour, I just sat down to eat my lunch. Uh, chicken curry, cold chicken curry by the way, in case you're interested. And I'd, I wasn't far into my lunch when all of a sudden I noticed the line was starting to, to move. So I put, my, I put my lunch down and I started focusing on the line and then slowly, slowly it moved, it tightened. It's not uncommon for a pike to pick up a bait and play with it. Sometimes they're not happy, they want to swallow it in one go, they want it head first usually. I picked the rod up and at that point I'm waiting to feel life on the end of the line. As soon as I feel life, whether it's a bit of movement or the line taking off again, I would close my fixed bow reel and tighten into the fish. Got fish. There we go. Oh, that's a good fish. Woo! That was a very slow start to morning. I didn't know if we were going to get it from there. Oh, that was a blister and run to start with. Fighting hard as well. Didn't even finish my lunch. <laughs> I 
need a bigger net. <sighs> there we go. Woo! Oh my god, this net's gonna break. <sighs> Good effort. After being handled and removing the hooks, I took a few quick photos and she was on her way. Considering this was a last minute session, I was pretty delighted with that fish. I place it anywhere between 12 and 14 pounds. Unfortunately, I didn't have any scales with me, but it's not too bad all the time. You get to make up the fish weights. Now, I've got to be careful with this fish. It's a big, beautiful fish. I can guess it's a hen fish. Look at this. <laughs> oh, just stunning. I had just sat down to start eating my lunch again when I got my second inquiry. This time it was different. The fish played with the bait a bit more. Picked it up, dropped it, picked it up, dropped it. This isn't uncommon. Often a pike will be fussy about how they swallow a bait. So it's not uncommon to have a pike play with a dead bait for five, 10 minutes before it picks it up. I would pick the rod up, hold the line in my hand. I was waiting for any signs of life on the other end to give me a confirmation that fish is there with a the bait in its mouth, at which point I'd tighten in. But that never came. Now I'd put the rod back down, i pick it up after it moved again, down, up, down, up. <sighs> seemed to, seemed the fish was just playing with me. But then it took one massive run. Oh yeah, here we go. Definitely a fish playing with the bait. Yes, here we go. We have a fish. We have. A fish. It picked the bait up and it shot off away from the bank. And I thought this is the time. Closed the reel, tightened into the fish. I started retrieving the line, and the the hooks didn't feel stuck as if I was stuck on the bottom or in a snag. But there was a lot of weight on the line, so I could only assume that this fish has taken the bait through the weeds, dropped it, and as I've tightened in, I've accumulated a big lump of weed. It wasn't stuck, so I was slowly bringing it in, but it was just about as much weight as that rod could handle. I was so convinced there was no fish on the line, that halfway through retrieving the line, I decided to stop bending the rod. I started holding the rod flat to the water, I would wind it in, and I'd walk back on the bank holding the spool. I used 50 pound braid minimum, so I knew I had the strength in the line to do so. I wasn't expecting there to be a fish on there, let alone a good one. Here we go. Oh, there is a fish! <laughs> <laughs> he just accumulated so much weed I couldn't feel him. Ah, oh, well, there you go, there's a turn up for the books. <laughs> oh, I'm an idiot. I'm an absolute idiot. Nice fish. I'm gonna leave him in the water whilst I try and clear a little bit of the weed from this line. Highland pike fishing. 90% weed, 10% fish. Yeah, that was a turn up for the books. It's um, it's one thing to be surprised with the uh, catch a fish you didn't think you had on. It's a nice moment. Going two for two on pike on your first two takes. That's pretty good, but I'm not going to start boasting yet. After that, I rebaited both the rods, set them back out in the same place as they were originally, and waited again. Once again, it wasn't long before I had another inquiry. This take felt different, however. The fish was less picky, it was more decisive, it picked up the bait, and I noticed the line was moving away straight away. I picked up the rod, closed the reel, and the fish was on straight away. This was three for three. After a short fight, I managed to bring the fish in and net it. It was about four pound pike, and a stunning example of one as well. Having managed two cracking fish at the start of the session, and got all the photos I wanted, I sent this guy on his way as quick as possible. It wasn't long before the rods were rebaited and out once more. But after this, the session slowly quietened down. I had half of my gear already packed away in the van and I came back to the lock for the second half. I'd left one rod in the water. As soon as I looked at picking it up, I noticed the line was moving away and this could have been the fourth fish of the session. With the rod in my hands, I waited 
and I watched and eventually the line starts spooling off the reel. This was the confirmation I needed to know the fish had the bait in its mouth. I closed the reel, I set the hooks and the fish was on. The fish took one blistering run and after a brief game of tug of war, it spat the bait and swam off victorious. Despite losing the last fish of the session, I was still going home a happy man. I'd landed three incredible pike and spent the day in the beautiful Scottish Highlands. It's just good for the soul. Well, I'm calling it quits. The last pike decided to uh, make a mess of my bait and then do a runner. So, man versus fish on this occasion. The fish won the last fight, but I think I won the war. So here you go, you've earned your keep. Thank you very much for joining me on this video. I hope you've enjoyed it, learnt something, or even picked up a few hints and tricks along the way. So until next time, take it easy and tight lines.